as it, as it goes through that long voyage around the center of the galaxy, it goes through spiral arms of galaxies that change our climate dramatically. It gathers something like 100 trillion tons of cosmic dust um, per year. And at certain points, it goes through clouds of cosmic fluff that triple the amount of that dust that we gather, which changes the climate considerably. And we go through a Milankovitch cycle. It changes the climate every 22,000, 40,000, and 110,000 years. Well, there are certain aspects of science that are religion because we science people have built with the same supernormal responses in us that the flying saucer people have in them. What really put the environmental movement on the map was Earth Day. And the guy who pulled that off really pulled off an amazing PR stunt. That was just an astonishing PR stunt. Because in the 1950s, when I was the head of the program committee at my high school, I programmed in a guy who talked to us about what was being done to whales. And the pictures were horrifying. This guy was a giant. He was about six foot two. And, and in those days, that was really, really tall. And he was the most severe person I'd ever met. He walked in without acknowledging me. I had booked him at all. He had a frown on his face that was unbelievable. He walked out with that same serious frown, uncompromising, without saying goodbye, without saying thank you, without any of the normal social graces. And he didn't have a name for what he was doing. Conservation was the name of what he was doing mm. back then. And it was Earth Day that put another word on the map, environmentalism and that got environmentalism into first grades and second grades and fourth grades when kids are at an imprinting age, when their brains are literally being fashioned around some of the key things that they absorb at that age. When we talk about impression, we're talking about a certain element of the morphology of the brain that wraps itself around certain things and then never lets them go. And environmentalism was built to get into the brains of young people and never leave. In, eventually, environmentalism developed its own end-of-the-earth scenario. It tried to develop one in 1968 when Paul Ehrlich, who was a butterfly specialist, um, said that by 1980, which, remember, 1968 was 12 years away, so that's like my talking about something that will happen in 2030. It seemed a long ways away. And he said by 2000, by 1980, we would get to the point where there were so many people on the planet that we'd have to stand on each other's shoulders. There would be no room for us. We would vastly outstrip the carrying capacity of the environment, meaning the food supply would run out. It would not be able to keep up with our population growth. And as a consequence, in the early 1980s, people would die by the hundreds of millions in India and China and even the United States. But did remember all the hundreds of millions of people dying in India and China and the United States? Remember how your parents had to stand on each other's shoulders in order to find room to live? No, I don't recall that. You don't? I just, what's wrong with <laughs> you? I don't understand. Well, so, it's much like the apocalyptic cults, they move the goalposts. Right? Yeah, exactly. And so now it's climate change. And originally it was global warming, and then they smartened up to the fact that they better cover their ass just in case we had an ice age. <laughs> Nobody can save All the wars were waiting All the wars no more All we want is morning All we want is dawn All we want You support Trump? You do? Yep. Okay. I was one of the first endorsers, public okay. endorsers of President Trump. What are you Trump. guys going to do when our ocean level rises? Thank you for asking that no, question. No, I have no, the answer, though. No, let me finish. I have the answer. Let me finish. Well, well um, thank right you for now. the question. Yeah. Right now, for, okay. For the first time on Earth, we're changing the gas. Now you're full of shit. Sit down. This because I'm going to tell you right now. Children. No, I've got children. I've got 21, 23 year old children. And what's their future with you people with money? You, you, you talk about money all of the time. Okay, okay, sit down please. In 2011, my wife and I were in Antarctica. 
renewing our vows. For most of you that don't know, Antarctica is on a mountaintop. Okay? And uh, there is a $500 million fa uh, facility, uh, scientific facility there, and, and the scientists came to give us presentations about global warming. And they had cores of ice that they had drilled. They had drilled four or 5,000 cores and they only brought 15 or 20. So they're going through the second or third core and they said uh, 275,000 years ago, this was the temperature, blah, 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 blah. And then 55,000 years ago, the world was two degrees warmer Celsius than it is today. This is 2011. And I oh, stop, stop, stop. And he said, and I said, well, you mean the whole world? He says, yes. And the poles are only benchmarks. And I said, well, what about the things that the, the young woman alluded to? Okay. And he said, it's all cyclical. And although the gas may have exacerbated it, in the cosmos of time, it's not a fart in the wind. Of the 13.8 billion years that we've been on this miserable planet, it's not a fart in the wind. Now, my direct answer to your question, if that were really true, would you believe, and let's just for a moment say that it is true, that means that the best scenario vis-a-vis -vis global warming is about 10 feet raising water. That's the best scenario over the next 40, 50 years. That's the best scenario. The worst scenario is about 100 feet. But let's just take the 10 feet. If the water on the planet is going to rise up 10 feet, that means the southern part of the United States is gone. England is gone. Most of Europe is gone. And I can go, uh, most of Central America is gone. Okay. If that's the case, let's just take Florida, for example, which is one of the fastest growing condominium, beachfront condominiums on the planet. In the prospectus, when you invest, there should be, in the footnotes, if global warming is for real, they won't put it that way, global warming happens and water rises 10 feet, this investment you made is call. Not one single investment prospectus written since 2000, this century, has alluded to global warming. Now one mother if it were really true, the banks wouldn't invest. The banks wouldn't finance. Not one mother condominium. So the people that have the money, and I'm, I'm jealous of the Vice President Gore, which Sally and I rode on a plane from South America with a few years ago. I am jealous he came up with a scam before I did. Because the financial institutions, the banks of this world know it's not going to happen. Otherwise, you couldn't get a damn loan in London. You know those 30, 40-year mortgages? The world will be over by then. Is Barclays Bank going to give you a mother loan? With the greatest respect, ma'am, it's the greatest fraud that's been perpetrated on mankind this century.